Hi friends, my name is Cindy and I am one of the children's librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. And today we're going to do our third reading of Piper Green and the Fairy Tree by Ellen Potter and illustrated by Kim Lang. We're gonna start with chapter eight. Mrs. Pennypocket. The only person who wasn't running all over the place was old Mrs. Pennypocket. She and her brown and white bull terrier, Nigel, were taking their morning stroll. Just my luck though, Nigel decided to go to the bathroom right on my tree. Piper, Mrs. Pennypocket was looking up at me. What are you doing in that tree? Oh, just enjoying the view, I told her. Why aren't you in school? She asked. It's a long story, Mrs. Pennypocket. I said, now can I ask you something? I guess so, she said. Have you ever heard of a tree crying, I asked, because I think this one is. Mrs. Pennypocket put her ear against the tree. Yup, she said, it's crying all right. Mrs. Pennypocket stepped on an old stump beside the tree, pulled herself up by a branch, and sat in a wide crook in the tree. You're pretty bouncy for an old lady, I told her. Thank you, she said. She knocked on the trunk. Then she put her ear against it and listened. She knocked and listened again. Finally, she hopped back down. I need tools, she said. Then she and Nigel hurried away. A few minutes later, Mrs. Pennypocket came back with Nigel trotting behind her. Now she was carrying a handsaw. Come down out of that tree, Piper, she said. Oh, are you chopping it down? I asked in a shocked voice. Just a little piece of it, said Mrs. Pennypocket. I was beginning to wish I hadn't told Mrs. Pennypocket about the crying tree. Not only did I have to come out of my hiding spot, but now she was going to hack it all up. I climbed down and sat in the grass beside Nigel. He rested his big, funny-looking head on my lap and sighed. We both watched as Mrs. Pennypocket began to saw at a branch. She sawed for a long time. Every so often, she stopped to fan herself. Aren't you so hot in those earmuffs, Piper? She asked me. Kind of, I said. Actually, my ears were feeling gross and sweaty. Then why don't you take them off? Mrs. Pennypocket asked as she started sawing again. I, I can't, I told her. Why? Are they glued to your head? No, my brother Eric gave them to me. Mrs. Pennypocket didn't say anything for a minute. She just kept sawing. Then she asked, Eric went off to high school on the mainland this year, didn't he? I nodded. Since the Mink Island School only goes up to eighth grade, you have to leave home when you turn 14. You have to go to school on the mainland and sleep in a dorm or stay with another family. Missing him, are you? said Mrs. Pennypocket. I nodded again. Everything is stinky without him, I said. Hmm, she said. Suddenly, the branch Mrs. Pennypocket was sawing made a cracking sound. The very next second, it thumped to the ground. There we go cried Mrs. Pennypocket. Now climb back up, Piper, and have a look. I climbed up the tree. When I got to the place where the branch was cut off, I saw something surprising. There's a hole in the tree, Mrs. Pennypocket, I said. Yup, she said. Go on and peep in. I peeped in the hole, and guess what? Something peeped back up at me. Chapter 9. The Fairy Tree. I reached into the hole in the tree. My hands closed around something soft and fuzzy. It said, wee, 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 but nice and quiet this time. I pulled it out very carefully. It was a tiny gray kitten. It had a pipsqueak of a nose and big green eyes. Oh, look at you, I said, tickling the kitten's chin. You are as cute as a cupcake. The kitten yawned, sticking out its pink tongue. I think it was tired from all that crying. Then I thought of something. Hey, Mrs. Pennypocket, I called down to her. How do you think this little guy got inside the tree in the first place? Well, sometimes a mother cat will hide her kittens in funny places, said Mrs. Pennypocket. Maybe the kitten just got stuck in there. Then guess what happened next? You'll never guess. I heard another wee, wee, wee from inside the tree. Mrs. Pennypocket, I called out excitedly. I think there's another one in there. I snuggled the gray kitten against my chest with one hand while I reached back into the hole with my other hand. 
My fingers touched something soft and fuzzy again. Very gently, I scooped it up. Out came a black kitten with tiny white feet and a skinny white stripe down its nose. I lifted up the bottom of my shirt and made a kangaroo pouch for the kittens to sit in. Then, just to be sure, I felt around inside the tree hole to see if there were any more kittens, which there weren't. I stared down at the kittens in my shirt. They were looking back up at me. I couldn't stop smiling at those cuties. You two are like little treasures hidden right inside a tree, I said to them. A treasure in a tree, said Mrs. Pennypocket. Oh, Piper, oh my goodness, I just thought of something. Mrs. Pennypocket hurried away again. She is a very active old lady, I thought. A few minutes later, she came back with a cardboard box in one hand and a flashlight in the other. Hand me those kittens, Piper, said Mrs. Pennypocket. Very carefully, I handed her the gray kitten and then the black and white one. Mrs. Pennypocket put them in the box. The kittens snuggled right up in there. Then Mrs. Pennypocket flipped the flashlight on and handed it to me. Now, Piper, she said, shine the flashlight down that hole in the tree. Tell me if you see anything. I leaned over and shined that light into the hole. All I see is tree, I said, but suddenly I did see something. I squinted at it. Hey, there are letters carved into the wood, I said. They say, I squinted harder, they say L-A-E. Mrs. Pennypocket clapped her hands and smiled. I knew it. Those are my grand's initials, Laura Ann Easton, which means that this, she gave the tree an excited pat, is the fairy tree. What's a fairy tree, I said. It was something Grand told me about, said Mrs. Pennypocket. When she was a girl about your age, she found a tree that had a hole in it. It was the perfect place to hide treasures. One day, she put a seashell inside that hole. The next day, the seashell was gone, and in its place was a little toy horse. She said the fairies must have left it there for her. The toy horse brought her all kinds of good luck. You take a treasure and you leave a treasure. That's how the fairy tree works, Gran told me. I asked her where the tree was, but Gran had left Peekaboo Island many years before, so she couldn't quite remember. She did tell me that she had carved her initials in the hole, though, and here it is. Do I have to leave something in the tree now, I asked. Mrs. Pennypocket thought about it. It seems like the thing to do, she said. But what should I leave, I asked. Well, a treasure, of course, Mrs. Pennypocket said. She picked up her saw. Look after those kittens, Piper. Then she headed home with Nigel jogging along beside her. I looked at the kittens in the box. They were rolling around and swatting at each other with their tiny paws. I smiled at them. Things seemed a little less stinky somehow. I looked for a treasure to put in the tree. First, I stuck my hands in my pocket and pulled out an old hair barrette. It was a little bashed up. That didn't seem like a good treasure. I checked my backpack, two pencils, a math book, and a glue stick. Hmm. I looked in my lunchbox, tuna salad. Ew. Suddenly, I knew just what I needed to do, except I didn't really want to do it. I gave my earmuffs a sad little pat. Then I took them off my head. I kissed Glunky. Have a nice life, Glunky, I whispered to him. Then I kissed Jibs. Take it easy, old Jibs. I put the earmuffs into the fairy tree's hole. Right then, I heard my name being called. I looked down the road. A whole bunch of people were rushing toward me. One of them was Dad. He was wearing his shiny orange oilskin pants and his black muck boots. He was also wearing a big frown on his face. Uh-oh. Chapter 10. Special delivery. It turned out that when I didn't show up at the Maddie Rose, Mr. Grindle had called Mom to make sure I got home okay. That's when all the fuss started. Piper Green, Dad said in his angriest voice. Do you realize that half the island has been out looking for you? We were worried sick. Do you know how much trouble you have caused? He said a lot of other things too, but I do not want to talk about them but they included no TV for a month. 
When dad stopped yelling, mom showed up and she took over the yelling. But when they noticed the kittens in the box, they both simmered down a little. I guess it's hard to be mad when two cutie cupcake faces stare up at you. I'm really, really sorry about everything I told them, but it's okay now because look, I patted my naked ears. I took them off. Well, that's a step in the right direction, dad said. Where are they? Mom asked. I decided to give them to the tree, I told her. Mom and dad looked at each other. Piper, you are a most unusual child, dad said. Yeah, well, Leo is the one who's married to a piece of paper named Michelle, I replied. It turned out Mrs. Pennypocket's grandma was right. The fairy tree really worked. The kittens brought me good luck because later that afternoon, there was a knock on our door. Special delivery, someone outside shouted. When I opened the door, my Aunt Terry was standing there. She is tall and skinny and she has long, shiny, dark hair. She lives on the mainland in a town called Camden where she has her very own beauty spa. I went there once. She painted my fingernails blue and put green mud on my face. I looked like a zombie, it was awesome. Aunt Terry handed me a bag from the store in Camden. Inside the bag were some cans of kitten formula and two tiny baby bottles. Your mom called and told me about the kittens, said Aunt Terry. Where are they? Where are they? Aunt Terry is just crazy about cats. I showed her the box on the floor. Mom had put a blanket inside the box. She had also put a heating pad underneath the box to keep the kittens toasty warm. Aww, Aunt Terry cried when she saw them. They are wicked sweet. I found them in a tree, I said proudly. Mrs. Pennypocket has been keeping an eye on that tree, said Mom. She wants to see if the mother cat comes back for them. So far, no mama cat. That's because it's the fairy tree, I thought. But I didn't say it out loud. I liked keeping the fairy tree a secret. Oh, by the way, Piper, Aunt Terry said, I left a little something for you outside. Is it green mud from your spa? I asked hopefully. Just go see, she said. And she sat down beside the box to play with the kittens. I walked to the front door and opened it. There was no package or bag or anything. Hmm. I stepped outside. From behind the dogwood bush, someone jumped out and grabbed me. Gotcha, he yelled. Eric! I started hopping up and down. My face couldn't stop smiling. He picked me up and flipped me around and held me upside down by my ankles. What are you doing here? I said in my upside down voice. Aunt Terry called to say that she was taking her boat to Peekaboo Island and asked if I wanted to come along. So, do you miss me? Nope, I told him. Yeah, I don't miss you either, he said, grinning. He lowered me so that I was touching the ground. Then he let me go. I jumped up. Come see the kittens, I said. I grabbed him by the hand and pulled him inside. Mom and dad gave Eric hugs and mom said he looked too skinny. He always looks that skinny, Leo said. Thanks a lot, Eric said, ruffling Leo's hair. How's Michelle doing? I'm mad at her, Leo pinned, I mean, held up his pinky, which had a Band-Aid on it. She gave me a paper cut. Here's a picture of their family. Aunt Terry was sitting on the floor. The kittens were climbing all over her. Mom and Dad say we can keep them, I told Eric. Now you have to find good names for them, Aunt Terry said. How about Indiana Jones and Chewbacca, suggested Leo. Too long, Aunt Terry said. How about Magnificent and Meatball? Too weird, I said. And anyway, I already knew what I was going to call them. The next day in school, everyone's definition of themselves was hanging on the wall, except for mine. I left a spot right by Jacob's for your definition, Piper, said Ms. Arabella, and it's nice to see your ears, she added, smiling. Nice to see yours, too, I told her. She made a little noise in her throat before she swished back to her desk. I knew exactly how I was going to finish my definition. I had thought about it all of yesterday. I picked up my pencil, and in my neatest handwriting, I wrote, Piper Green's favorite things, my brother Eric, cinnamon buns, and my brand new kittens named Glunky and jibs. The end. And that was the end of Piper Green and the Fairy Tree by Ellen Potter and illustrated by Kin Len. And tomorrow we will read from the second book of Piper Green and the Fairy Tree. Thanks for coming by, friends. My name is Cindy. I'm one of the children's librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine and I hope that you'll stop by again for another reading soon.